Smell that? It's time for a swing dance reaction video. Welcome to Street Smart Swing. My name is Jamin Jackson, also known as the Galactic Swing Dance Umpire, and I am super excited to be watching another Lindy Hop video. And today's video is going to be Champions Cup Korea number two rookie Jack and Jill finals. I'm super excited about it. Let's get into it. And here we go. <laughs> Oh, and they're actually doing this to a live band. Awesome. So you guys know me, I am specifically looking for the element of control first. And as you all can see, I don't see any weak links in terms of the control of this technique with any of these dancers. So I, I now have to move into what they do with this control, which is very subjective. We're gonna talk about this in detail after this. I love that move. <laughs> hey, I saw that. I saw that little detail.
Hey! Right, here we go, the all skate. Yes. Oh, I saw the leg, the girl on the orange, the orange skirt. It was right on beat. It was perfect. Yes. Let's talk about this. Let's let's talk about this word rookie. It actually doesn't mean rookie. I've told you guys many times that. Dancing in Korea for swing is a different level altogether. There are many implications of why that is, but I can't explain to you. It, it's like they just work harder as a community. And I, when I look at that word rookie, it doesn't mean that. It's, it's like on Facebook when it says you're interested in an event and you click interested. It doesn't mean that you're going. It just means that you're noticing that there's an event. It doesn't mean, yes, I'm actually going to go to that. So the word interested doesn't mean interested, right? And it's the same when I think about rookie. Because when I honestly look at this level of this particular competition, with these dancers specifically, I would say 95% of them would fit into the category <clears throat> of advanced in America. And I'm, I'm not talking about any advance. I'm talking about advance to the all-star level for uh, what a lot of people would would say is that level here in America. And the reality is, guys, it's, it is that way in many cases. True. Some places I go to, the dancing is super high like in Korea. It's, it's just so much better on a technical standpoint that I have to scrutinize them from a completely different lens. I have to get more into the subjective realm of judgment, which I will say, like in every video, that being a judge for any competition in swing is a, is a subjective thing. The majority of it is subjective. There is a small part that is objective, and that is that element that allows every dancer on the planet to dance with anybody else's style and it still work. That's that fundamental thing that we like to call control. I like to call it control. Some people like to call it good technique. But again, that creates a lot of ambiguity for me. What technique are you using? What Whose style are you doing? And, and it blends the lines of what style and what is subjective and what's objective. I don't like that. I like to look at the most basic studs that you would have on a house and say, the foundation of the house is absolutely necessary. It's the concrete slab or the foundation right and that foundation is control can i see the leader initiate to the follower with clarity and both of them do their roles without interrupting each other and clearly when i saw this competition i didn't see anybody that had that problem i'm sorry they all could could do the control part and i could be super pretentious with a straight face and act like you gotta work on that swing out you just gotta keep working on it it's so so hard it's a big mystery it's in my big head here, but just keep working on it. You know, I could easily pull that card, but I don't like doing that. I do not like doing that. I don't like using um, that kind of position to make things that should not be difficult, difficult, right? A swing out's not hard according to the level of what everybody was doing. Everybody could do it. Now, Aside from that, once you have covered the, the control part, which is that small objective element of swing dancing, where else can you be judging a dancer? The rest of it is how they want to move. 
with the music in front of an audience. Now, I have to easily say that when I'm watching a competition, my ultimate goal is to see if I can get an emotional response once we got the technical stuff out of the way, right? Because the audience clearly will give you an emotional response. If they know you, they're going to scream. If they like something that was unfamiliar, they may give you a modicum of truth there. They may say you had an idea that was worth yelling for, right? But even in that, as a judge, I have to be extra critical because every yell in the audience doesn't necessarily mean something uh, was original, which is something I value, or done well, which is control. And so what I like to look for is I want to see if the dancers can get an emotional reaction by doing something original. And I will tell you right now, <clears throat> most of the movements that I saw in this competition were not 100% original. So there's a giant slash for every dancer for me when I look at that. It was kind of a homogenous tone when I looked at all of these dancers. And my first reaction, honestly, when I see the technique this good, is I immediately go to the imperfections that I would like to call style. Those imperfections mean that, hey, they can still do the technique with clarity to their partner, but it might look a little different. It might look a little clunky in certain areas. But as long as they make those choices deliberately, it's not bad technique for me. If they're quirky and they like to do their swing out with a straight face, that's not bad. That's just the way they like to do it. So when I'm judging, I'm actually looking for their, their weirdness. I'm looking for the unique attributes that make them more appealing and uh, unique compared to everybody else around them. That's the part that I look for. So in this competition, I saw really there were two couples that stood out to me. Two couples. And uh, the second couple that I really liked, he was wearing, uh, looked like it was, uh, he was wearing white and she was wearing red. Yes, he had a white shirt on, blue tie, and he had yellow shoes and she had a red shirt and black uh, and a black skirt. I loved them. I really loved them. And what I loved most about them is the fact that when they were dancing, I did not see the leader get in the way of the follower. And in fact, I saw a, a, a peaceful confidence. That's really hard to be able to portray in, on the leader side of the body. I, I refer to it as the body because it's two people coming together to make one body. And they share energy at different points. So when I see the, the, the masculine side of that or the leader, I did not see like this just passiveness that looked like he wasn't confident in what he was doing. There was this relaxed intensity that was there. And that, and that was great. I loved that. They also had some timing parts with their footwork. They were doing different kinds of syncopations. Um, in different types of time that I really appreciated. They stood out to me uh, the second most. So they were my second favorite couple. I liked uh, the response that the audience gave to what they were doing because I felt it was genuine. I gave a sensible chuckle because I saw the moves before done by some other people in other contests. So it wasn't bad, but it, it basically takes a back seat to what I value the most, and that is creativity alongside being able to control the technique. That is the built-in assumption that you do know how to control it. I just want to see something done new with it, right? And so they were they were fantastic. I don't know their names. I wish I knew everybody's names. The, the names were going by so fast. All I could do was really just kind of scrutinize their clothing and um, put, put, have that represent who they are. But um, my first and favorite couple out of this competition and this wasn't hard for me to decide. Uh, the couple that I liked, the gentleman had on a blue uh, jacket and tan pants, had those like gap khaki uh, pants. And she uh, she had like a brown dress on. It looks like a taupe color. What I loved about them is they were trying different things. I could tell the leader was taking risk in initiating uh, different shapes with his partner and she went with it there was no like 
insecurity or or delay or uh, nervous hesitation to just try the different move that they were going for. And they did it twice. They did it in the first set and they also did it in the second set. And they also matched each other's energy level. That energy that I'm talking about is visually. When they were moving, um, clearly they're sharing energy physically on a kinesthetic level. But also visually, I didn't see the leader just like, yeah! And the partner was just like, okay, what are you doing? They both were kind of moving with the same intensity. And I like that. I like to see the call and response, the echo effect of, of the leader and the follower working together as one body. And so for me, they, they not only had timing, a lot of everybody else had timing. In fact, the timing that most people had was the macro timing where the phrasing changes. And you know they all kind of emphasize that fourth A count. But what I liked with what they did is they tried different things in their timing. They didn't just do the simple moves that we all know. I get so tired of seeing the same old thing that Suzy Q, everybody does the same thing. Or we all kind of do the same shake the same way. We don't even actually mean it. <laughs> so for me, it, 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 it doesn't evoke like joy when I see everybody just do the same thing in the dead space that we're supposed to fill. It actually says we're scared. It doesn't say we're joyful and happy. It says we're terrified and even trying to do anything. So we settle for what we've been told to do. And for me, everybody gets a slash for that because that's that's the part where I think as a whole, the dancers in this competition can work on just trying to be themselves a little more. And that's super intimidating to do because criticism is right at the door when you try something that's different. And that's not really fair. It's not really fair also to just do the exact same moves and everyone does them as if it's okay. There's this built-in idea that you just keep repeating the same moves over and over and, and everybody's supposed to cheer, right? Now, I get it if you're cheering, you've never seen it before it's your or it's your favorite move and you just can't wait for everybody to do that move again. But for me, it's so disingenuous. In, in an inadvertent way, I don't think dancers mean to do it. I just think it's their their comfort zone that causes them to just kind of fall into default and do things that just naturally is their impulse based on what they've been told to do. And so, I'm not just criticizing them. I criticize everybody in the scene for this because I don't. I even see some of my peers that get in these invitational competitions and they literally just do the exact same thing, or they imitate whoever's the hero of the month which tends to be kind of the same people. And I don't like that either. Uh, it means Lindy Hop's too small, it's too controlled, it's too political. It, it, it can be manipulated artistically to where people say, oh, only this is valued, when really it's a subjective thing that you like. And so that's why I spend a lot of time, guys, watching these videos and telling you that it is not hard, the technique. This is the rookie level, and look how advanced they are at the technique. What's hard is ingenuity. It's one thing to perfect something that already exists. It's a completely different thing as a whole to be able to bring something into existence that came out of an emotional connection with music and you made it happen. Or you polished an idea that was inside of you that you, you saw from someone else and something else was birthed from that that we haven't seen. That is the real ingenuity that makes Lindy Hop interesting. So I wish other people could start taking risks. When I came to the scene, that's all I was doing. I came from the world of dance. And a lot of people that get into swing dancing, they're not like professional dancers. They're just regular people who decide to get involved with dancing and this is their very first dance, right? And I applaud those people because most of the time, they're not like professional dancers. Or they're timid, you know, and they're overcoming things. And this is like a way for them to have another outlet to connect. But I came from the professional dance world. And I came into this thinking, hey, this is my ancestor's art form and we're still doing stuff from like the 1930s and overhyping it like we're amazing. Come on now. And so for me, my passion is in creating new ways to move and to, to and push myself and my online community. Um, so if you like that, if you want to be pushed, if you want to get some ideas to, to plant seeds of ingenuity inside of yourself so that you can take risk in your own house and your own privacy, 
before you present those perfect moves to people on the social dance floor, I encourage you to check out some of my free courses. I got about 25 courses of all, some of my original work. Of course, I'll be teaching some of the more classic, uh, fundamental moves that you need to know. For me, everything that came from the 1930s is fundamental. You've got to learn it. You have to literally come into this humbly like I did as a professional. You want to come in. You don't want to ask unnecessary questions. You don't want to just try to make the teacher laugh. Come in, learn this sucker, get it down, and then we want to see you. We want to see what you, what value you can add on to the dance. Don't come in and try to fundamentally change it to suit your preference. That's disrespectful. You want to come in and you want to master it if you really love it. Rant over. So anyway. What did you guys think of this competition? I told you, these dancers are excellent on a technical level. And if they came to America and I was at the biggest event, many of them would get first place bigger than many of my peers who are teaching them. So that'll tell you my opinion, right? So let's not get it twisted that the technique is so hard that it's such a big deal. I wanna see some fresh stuff. I wanna see some new stuff. I'm proud of the first place winners. Let me know who these people are in the comment section. I'd love to give them a proper shout out. They were amazing. And I want to hear what you think about this Jack and Jill competition. Let me know in the comments section. If I don't see you guys' comments in this video, hopefully I will see you in one of my classes online or in the next reaction video.